All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in. Happy to be with you today and to uh, share a little bit of knowledge and hopefully uh, enlighten and help you guys out and make you better problem solvers, technicians, or hobbyists, whatever it is you want to do. Uh, today, we are going to talk about um, how stators, uh, generators, alternators, any of those type of voltage producing devices work. Um, so let's go ahead. General term is a stator for a motorcycle or a generator uh, or a alternator for a car. All the same thing conceptually. I've had a lot of questions about how to diagnose uh, charging system issues. Um, and today we're gonna focus on the stator or the generator or the alternator all very much the same thing depending on uh, the vehicle you're really working on. Uh, typically on motorcycles, you're working with a stator or a generator, and on a car, you're, it's called an alternator. They all generate voltage, so it's truly all the uh, same device conceptually, and that's what we're, we're, that's what we're gonna go over today. Um, I really feel that once we understand what's going on conceptually, uh, the systems become very easy to diagnose. We're not listening necessarily to directions or instructions. We understand the principles and we're able to uh, check at certain points if uh, those principles are being upheld, if the device is working correctly based on its design. And that's what we're going to go ahead and check. So the first thing we want to look at um, when talking about a uh, voltage producing device being a stator, generator, or alternator is what is called the permanent magnet. And I'm going to use an oil filter to draw our, a permanent magnet for us here. Figure it's a little fitting being that this is an automotive channel that we use an automotive device, device, <laughs> automotive part to make a circle. All right, so we have our circle. This circle um, is our, I don't want to say it is a permanent magnet because truly it's not. Uh, what is really designed into these are permanent magnets. So I'm going to go ahead and draw one here like so. As we all know, magnets are attracted to other phosphorus materials. It will take a polarized element and literally move the electrons inside of this element to one side or the other uh, based on the polarity of our magnet. Now, if this was also a magnetic material, it wouldn't allow the electrons to move to one side or the other, they are, I don't want to say permanently, but for the sake of this discussion, permanently placed on one side or the other, creating a magnet. So if this was a magnet, it would attract in one direction and it would repel in the other. But because it's not a magnet and it is still uh, phosphorus, it allows the electrons to move to one side or the other inside of this device. And that right there is the beauty of uh, metals. Okay, so we have our permanent magnet, and we know that permanent magnets move electrons. So what are we going to use to move electrons? Well, we are going to use a wire um, that has electrons contained inside of it, like so. Now, this wire is its limit of number of electrons that are able to be moved is based upon its length. So to allow ourselves to be more efficient and move more electrons, what we do is we coil the wires. So we have multiplied the amount of wire in the same length by quite a bit which multiplies the number of electrons that we are able to move with one single magnet. 
So then we get to how we actually will move the electrons. Well, as we know, this stator has a center and it rotates, forgive my arrows here, it rotates about that center. So as this rotates, it pulls the electrons to this side of that wire when the permanent magnet is here. Well, what about when the permanent magnet is over here? It'll actually will move the electrons back in the other direction. So what I'm going to do is to show you guys what is actually going on as uh, the electrons move inside of that wire. I'm just going to make a line here. Okay. So the electrons are in a null state. They are not excited. They aren't moving at all. When we bring the magnet up to uh, the electrons, all of a sudden, sorry, up to the wire, all of a sudden, like I said, the electrons will move to one side. So inside of the wire, it'll look like this. We'll have these tiny balls of electrons inside of a wire. And as we move our magnet close to the wire, what we will do is pull all of the electrons to this side. Now, as we pull these electrons, we are creating electrical pressure, just as if this was water uh, inside of a hose, we're creating electrical pressure inside of a wire. And electrical pressure is classified as voltage. Voltage equals electrical, can't spell, there we go, electrical pressure. That's a principle that we want to uh, know and understand. So what happens when we move the magnet to the opposite side is that we will move the electrons to the other side of the wire. They will now move to this side of the wire and we get electrical pressure going in the opposite direction as before. So as this magnet rotates around this wire here, what we get is pressure in this direction and then pressure in that direction. So what does that look like? Well, it creates a sine wave of electrical pressure. So if this was our zero state of electrical pressure, let's call this positive 15 volts of electrical pressure and negative 15 volts of electrical pressure. So what happens is the magnet is pulling in this direction here and then it rotates and it'll pull all of the electrons back down to this direction here and then back up here and down here and up again and down again like so and what we will get produced is a sine wave of electrical pressure so this sine wave right here is actually what we call AC voltage and AC standing for alternating current hence where you get the name alternator from all right so with that understanding we can go ahead and look at um, what this voltage is. So voltage to enable in order to get a voltage reading it's not only electrical pressure it's a difference in electrical pressure and the 
difference that we are always referencing from is our ground. That's why this is black. And the ground is always zero voltage. So I'm going to go ahead and just darken that in there. So right here is our ground reference versus our positive pressure or negative pressure. Um, really it's just the difference in pressures, not directional based for this discussion, but this difference in pressure is our voltage. So effectively we're only producing voltage here, 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 and here. That's where we are producing voltage effectively based on our rotation. So what about all this empty space in between? What are we going to do with that? Don't we want to have voltage all the time? Yes. So I'll show you how we go about achieving that. Okay, so how we achieve more voltage all the time. Well, what if we drew, I guess we'd be placing another coil of wire inside of that uh, stator. What would that do? So we have a magnet that passes here and a magnet that passes here. So all of a sudden we can not only we not only produce one sine wave of voltage but we can produce two sine waves of voltage. So here's what that looks like in terms of voltage inside of our wire we're going to have voltage, a sine wave come here just off of this sine wave here, 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 and here. So we'll get a sine wave that looks like this just next to our original sine wave of voltage. So I think you guys can get the point now. What we can do is even add another one. And now what we'll get is a third sine wave of uh, voltage. And what that looks like is here. So you can see by adding in more coils of wire, we've filled in a lot of the gaps in our voltage. Uh, in fact, if we want to look at this a little bit more analytically in terms of what we can do with it, our peak voltage really never goes below that point right there. At all points throughout our wave, we don't go lower than that point overall. And that's important when we go into uh, the next step of DC voltage and testing regulators. So one more thing before I wrap up this discussion is what we can also do inside of our device, our, our stator, to increase the number of sine waves produced to decrease the gap in our uh, voltage produced is to add in more magnets to move more voltage with the same around, amount of sorry, produce more voltage, move more electrons with the same amount of rotations. So what I'll do is I'll put in a picture of a stator, uh, the magnet on the outside and the amount of coils on the inside, so you guys can see why that is. Effectively, by adding in three more magnets to our existing one, we just quadrupled, actually, we multiplied by eight the number of sine waves that we would have on this graph. I'm not going to draw that because it'll look very nasty, but hopefully you get the idea. It will change our uh, effective um, low and, vo and voltage, our maximum, 
how do I say this? It'll change the minimum amount of voltage all the time to being even higher. Say, if this was uh, 14 volts, and this was 13, we raised our, our overall effective voltage from 13 to 14 volts. Theoretically, if we were to add enough sine waves in here, we would never go below 15 voltage, 15 volts because there's enough sine waves to take up the space of all the gaps. So for a little overview, uh, what we have going on here in our stator, generator, alternator, they all pretty much work the same, is we will have um, a permanent magnet orbiting around wires to move electrons to produce voltage, which is electrical pressure. And when we move those electrons, what we get produced is a sine wave. That sine wave gives us an alternating current, alternating voltage. We'll go from voltage moving in this direction to voltage moving in this direction to voltage moving back up again. And what we want is to have our voltage as high as possible for as long as we can. To achieve that, we can add more coils and we can add more magnets to produce more sine waves, which decreases the gaps between the sine waves and ultimately raises our average peak voltage.